going to work on this other little hummingbird. I'm going to get him in there a little bit more detailed. So again, I'm using my mixture of mud. I'm working on this one, and here's my, my picture. And so again, I start working with that same brush dipped in my mix, thin mixture of my mud plus lip one. And again, I just want to keep refining the shapes, his basic shapes. His wing comes out. When I paint this, I'll paint it wet into wet, and I'll let those wings feather out into the, into the background color so that you get that feeling of movement. But he's got a little bit of a swing comes down, and then he, his tail flips up. I like to separate the feathers just a little bit in the tail. Helps give a feeling of movement. to fix a mixture of, real quick, let me get a mixture, I'm going to get a mixture of food in green, well, this tube's about gone, but um, if I can get it open, yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm going to use a little Viridian green plus my, my liquid, just make a little bit of a wash, and that's called a wash, the liquid plus a color, it's just called a wash. Because their heads are going to be green, and then they're that. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and wash this in in my green. That'll help give that brilliance of that green with sunlight hitting that his head. And that green comes down their back. Now he'll have some ruby on his throat. He's ruby, ruby red throat. In fact, let me get a little lizard crimson. Again, this is my paint. I use these Winton, Windsor, it's made by Windsor Newton, Winton oil color. And I get it in these great big 200 mil tubes. These, uh, it's a great grade of paint. It's not, it, they consider it a student grade, but frankly, Jack and I have used it for years. He used it on $60,000 portraits. Uh, it's a great paint, great color. It lasts just as long as what they call the professional uh, oil colors, so I have no qualms about using it or recommending it. And again, that's made by Windsor Newton, and the it's called Winton oil colors. So I make a wash then of the alizarin crimson plus liquid, and this is going to be then for his red throat. And that just get that washed in. His throat comes down like so. That just helps me determine, get, just kind of start working the detail, but that gives me that brilliant color. Then when I come back to paint it opaquely, I have that underneath that, that makes it even more brilliant. This little beak. And then his eye in here. I have my reference material right there that I can just keep referring to it. Now his top of his nose, or top of the nose. Jack always called their beaks noses. And uh, anyway, that kind of feathers out into there. And then the red comes up here. I'm, I'm using a mall stick. I, I rest my hand on this to steady my hand as I, I do this. Now, I made that a little bit wide, so I'm going to come back with a brush that I've dipped in thinner, cleaned out. And I can come back in and I can cut cut back in here so that's not as thick as it was. I can also do the same thing on his beak and get a nice little point. And then his chest will be white where the sun's hitting it. Now I'll paint that opaquely. That kind of starts getting him just I keep working from the basic shapes and then keep adding detail. And I'll do the same thing on all the hummingbirds. But this, this gives you an idea. Put his little, little feet in here. A 
I just love hummingbirds and I was out in the garden this morning and heard, heard those little happy squeaks. You just hear them, they're starting to come. My red yuccas are blooming and they're coming for the red yuccas. And saw one, so now I'll go ahead and fill up my feeders and they're back, coming back in. They're migrating through. And then this feather goes. Just a little bit more there. That goes out there. Just goes a little bit longer here. But you start just I start with the basic shapes and then begin adding detail. And this back wing is going to be softer. And this one has a little more detail in it. This, this part of the wing comes down. I want to lift up some of that color, so again, I wash my brush out, clean it, and I can lift that color off. I work out my details, my proportions, everything in my sketch. Then when I start painting, I don't have to worry about any of that. That's all, all taken care of. The green comes down a little bit under this wing and shows on his back. So we're really seeing him, we're seeing more of his back. In fact, this red comes around too much. And I have his eye coming too far back. It needs to be a little more turned that way. So then I can come back in with a little bit of this green. Yeah, that puts us seeing more of the back of his head and move his eye here. Again, this just gives you a real opportunity to work out the details before you get into painting. I can't tell you the, you know, so many artists, I, I have a lot of artists all over the world who send me pictures of their artwork in various stages and so many times I'll get, they'll send me a finished painting and I'll see things that, um, you know, I point out to them proportions, like uh, one person sent me a portrait he had done of a lady with a cello, and he had her feet just way, way, way too small. And had he done this technique of really sketching it in and getting all the proportions right, he would not have had to go back and paint that. Um, and just you, uh, We also use a mirror that is placed behind me in the studio and I can turn and look at my, my paintings in the mirror and that way I can judge them as if someone else has painted them. It switches it from the inventive side of your brain to the analytical side and it really allows you to see it as if someone else has painted your painting. And that was something that Jack learned from reading about Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci used that and absolutely swore by that technique. So it's a very good method to check, to critique your work, and that's something that I highly recommend that you do. I mean, I'm constantly turning and looking in the mirror to make sure that I've got proportions correct. It's just, it's a matter, you're, you, you need to be judging your painting as you paint, not waiting till the end and then looking at it and say, oh, this is wrong, when you could have, you know, caught it at an earlier stage and it would have been much easier. So that's how my hummingbird is sketched in, with color and everything, and I um, have to finish this other one, and I'll show you a picture of, of the painting when he's finished out. So you have a wonderful day to see the rest of the entire process of this painting. You can visit my blog. The link is in the description below. Just click on that and it'll take you right to the blog for this painting. And you can subscribe to my blog. You'll get a email notification every time I make a new post. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. So thank you so very, very much. And just remember, today is a great day to have a great day. So you have a great day.